Hi, and thanks for joining. This is Brian Ostrovsky, CEO of Locable, and I'm excited to talk with you today about audience development for local publishers. Now, when we talk about audience development, we're talking about how we can help you convert your print readers into web visitors, and even those web visitors into social media sharers to help you grow your reach, to help you grow your impact throughout the internet. Now, I wanna start with a few foundational concepts. And uh, most of you, especially you, you magazine publishers out there, have probably seen some of the stats put out by the MPA. Uh, they're 20 tweetable truths that magazines drive web search more than any other medium, which is a fantastic thing. And I, I don't think anyone's particularly surprised by this, because we know that when you're reading print, magazines and newspapers as well, you're an engaged audience. So the question becomes, where do those readers go? I would argue that most of those readers go to Google. They go to their smartphone, they go to their computer, they take a cue from your content, but then they're gone. And that's the problem. That doesn't help you. It doesn't necessarily help your advertisers. And so the things we talk about today will not only drive them online, but keep them in the family. So as we continue, let's talk for a moment about why people read you online and how they find you. Real straightforward stuff. So how they find you. First, they may be a direct visitor. They know about your brand, they're, they just, they're checking in. Second is search engines. Not just when they search for you, but if they're finding you when they're searching for local content and events and businesses, this is a terrific stream of traffic. Obviously, as your content is shareworthy and shared, social media traffic finds you. Refer a friend, you know, I read it in this magazine. Go check out this article about Dr. So-and-so. Email newsletters are powerful. They're overshadowed by social media because they're less contemporary and sexy, but they're actually more valuable even than social. And then the offline calls to action. If you're a print publisher, you have a physical way to get in front of people. We're going to talk about how you can use that effectively. So why do they come and why do they engage with your brand? Well, on the left, you see a nice little graphic put together by NPR where they did a pretty detailed study of the most shared, the most viral content at the local level. And I'll summarize it to the right and say, people engage with you for timely updates and information. They come to you for exclusive content and insights, but they also come for curated content. See, one of the problems we have online isn't that there's not enough information or even information overload, but something that I've heard said is filter failure. If you can provide a, a great local filter, there's huge value, even if you're just sharing a lot of content that may have been created elsewhere or commenting on it. Finding things to do, businesses, events, activities, and so forth are huge at the local level. Obviously, money savings and freebies and so forth. And then some people come for community pride, especially if there's uh, positive people and things going on. And so your print publications probably already cover a lot of these. The web can extend that. So the foundation of audience development, the foundation of using your print product, we call print to web. And I'm only going to talk about the first uh, three in this list, but happy to individually talk more. Uh, business basics, contextual calls to action, and the in this issue approach. This is our pragmatic, systematic, refined way that we've developed for you to drive people online and incentivize them and encourage them to share to social media. So let's get started. Business basics. Now, if you're a magazine, you have a different format than if you're a newspaper, but the concept is the same. For a magazine, we'd love to see at least a full page, ideally a two page spread, highlighting digital. Think of this as your per issue internet table of contents. Now, if you're a newspaper, you might do a ribbon on the bottom, you might be on the inside cover, something like that, but it's gotta be real real estate, it's gotta be consistent, and it needs to be visual. So you need to tell people that I can go online and, and sign up for your email newsletter for deals and event notifications. I've got some online exclusives, some local spotlights. Uh, there's a number of things that you can pull in. You can create a formula. In this case, this publisher uses this formula. Every issue, content changes. The key is finding a formula that highlights your strengths and communicates this value to the reader. The first thing you want to do is to signal that your website is not merely a replication of your print product. The next thing we call contextual calls to action. Now, this is taking a reader who's read an article or a piece of content, and while they're still interested, 
gets presented with a call to action to engage with you. So instead of going to Google, they go to you. And so on the right, you can see eight different calls to actions that we've created. We provide these to our publishers that we work with in our network, but these are templates and they address most of the situations. Now you'll notice it's hard to do a video in print, right? But you may very well have a video online. The key is this starts with identifying what is on your cutting room floor. What did not make it into print because there's too many pictures, there's a video, you're trying to do a contest, you've got uh, missed the deadline, whatever. The things that can't fit in print is where you start. But the key is you have to give your readers a clear, obvious, unconfusing, not you know very straightforward call to action. So here's what it looks like in uh, in practice. On the left, you have an article. At the end of the article, it's clearly a multi-page, you have this big, clear, obvious call to action. There is a prominent image, there is text that is concise, and there's an icon. Now, whether you use something that looks just like ours or you come up with your own, that's not so important. The important thing is to hit on those three basics and do it consistently. This is your chance to condition your readers. Think of back when you took psychology in college. You have Pavlov's dog. You ring the bell, you feed the dog. You ring the bell, you feed the dog. Eventually, you ring the bell and the dog starts to salivate. Here, you're ringing the bell saying, go online. And then the key is that online, you have to deliver a great experience. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but you can see in this case, it was a gallery. You've got a nice photo gallery. In this case, 21 images and it completes that experience. So how do I get people from print who are now motivated to go online? How do I like physically connect them with the content that they're looking for? Well, we've all seen the QR code. Technically it works, it works in a great way. Practically, it's a little less than optimal. You can put the full URL, but for search engine optimization reasons, it's a lot of characters. And even if you do a short code, it's still not ideal. So here is the drop dead simple, simple solution. And we follow the keep it simple, stupid mentality. You start with your call to action and you consistently communicate to people that when you go to our website, click on this graphic. When you go to our website and you're looking for this gallery, click on this graphic and that will take them to where they need to go. I'm going to ask you to hold for a moment and I'll come and complete the, the thought on that. But one thing I want to hit on quickly is that driving people online and delivering share worthy content is critical. You already knew getting traffic and engagement is important, but see, Facebook is changing. The number of people that you reach when you post to Facebook is going down, specifically if you are a page. Now in October, you could see you would reach 12% and in February, you're down to six. Word out of Facebook is they're going to one to 2%. So what does this mean? If you have a thousand likes and you post to Facebook, your average post will reach 10 to 20 people. Now there's a whole separate set of considerations here. It turns out this is probably a good thing for local publishers, but it's important to know and know how to uh, approach it. Because when somebody visits your site and they hit the like button or they hit the share button, more of their friends see it than when you try to push it, right? It's a friendly referral is more powerful than from a business on Facebook. And Facebook's not being evil. The simple fact is the average person on Facebook sees 300 posts a day, which is actually a shockingly high number. But they're pushed. 1500 posts a day. So for those of you who like to do the math, that means one out of five posts reach their goal. Four out of five do not. So the best way to get it out there is to have great content, get people to share it, and to have them tell their friends about you rather than you telling them about you and your content. Okay, so how do we get them to actually do this? So you've got them in print, you've got them excited about your content, they go online and you need to implement what we call the in this issue approach. Now the example I'm going to show you uses our technology. It's not required. You can do this in other technology. I'm going to show you the fundamentals. The first is post your content. Easy enough. If you've got a photo gallery, post it. It's an article. If you're talking about an event, post it. It's in your calendar. If you're talking about a business, make sure it's in the directory. Whatever it is, 
post your content, do it in a way that looks good, that it's easy to navigate. Make sure that it's shareable. You can't see it here. We just took a screenshot, but make sure that everything is socially shareable. We use an integration with add this. It's very easy, very easy. The next thing you create an article that we refer to as the in this issue article. Now, local Laban does a great job here, and I'm going to take a minute to highlight this. The first is it's a special type of article, not technically, but practically introduces it. Think of it as combining your publisher letter. And then below this, and this is what gets really important, you insert links to the content from the issue. This connects the dots on that table of contents. I can come here and there's more than three, but again, we did a screenshot. Here are three articles that our readers will be looking for related to this issue. Now, in our system, we have a really nice tool to drop it in. You can do copy and paste and other things in other systems. So build this out. What you may not realize is this has incredible search engine value on top of the pure value of discovery and sharing. You can even embed your digital edition. Let me say that again. You can even embed your digital edition. Now, I'm not going to argue for or against digital editions on this call. But if you are using a digital edition and it is on your home page in a readable format or it links out to a third party like issue, you're doing it wrong. Embed it here. When you want to promote your digital edition, you share this article. They can read it on this page with issue and many other providers. So this is critically important. It will single handedly drive page views. When people want to share your digital edition, they'll share this page. But see, here's the thing, whether they come from a share or they come from print, they might come to read your digital edition, but they click on a link because I want to see more pictures from the photo gallery. I want to enter the contest or watch the video. And now they're discovering other content. So you're giving people an opportunity to discover content and that's critical. Now it's not enough to have this article. You have to funnel people there. So on your homepage, you should have this article, that graphic. If I go back, remember I said from print, click on this graphic should be prominent on your homepage. In our case, we recommend putting it in the sidebar. And every time you have a new issue, you simply update the graphic and link it to the new in this issue article. But the key is it's prominent. It's in your face. You can't miss it. And once someone sees it once, they have been trained. And next issue, you follow the same process. There's one other benefit. This makes creating archives for each issue incredibly simple. Because every time you create a new in this issue, piece of content, you can add it to your archives and you're done. And people can easily browse through your archives, discover old content, and you'll notice you've created a network on your own website. Each issue has a dozen or so articles. They're linked to from in this issue. You have a dozen or dozens or hundreds of issues they're linked to on the archives and you create a standard process. What you're doing is you're creating one place for all related content and you're presenting it in a way that makes sense within the context of your print issue. Whew. Big topic. You may want to watch this more than once. You're going to want to make sure that whatever publishing platform you're using makes this easy. If this is not easy, you won't do it. But let me say, if it's not easy, that's a problem that has to be solved. Now, I want to highlight one other thing real quickly. When you go out on a sales call and you hand an advertiser, a prospective advertiser, your media kit, your rate card, your publication, what do they go to first? My money is they start leafing through your publication. They see their friends. They see the place that they go to eat. They see their kid's school. When you are doing our approach to audience development, you make selling digital easier. Because see, most people don't understand why a reader would go to your website. And you communicating your traffic, you communicating anything technical to them does not solve this fundamental disconnect. But if I can flip through your publication and I can see your business basics page and your contextual calls to action, I can understand that the readers that you have in print are the readers that go to your website online. And I want my brand to be there. This is part of your long-term sales efforts and it makes selling digital incredibly, incredibly easy. Now I'll highlight one other thing. Only at the local level are your readers and your advertisers one and the same. Think of how many people call you because they picked up your print publication and said, I want to be here too. 
This is exponentially more true online because online they can engage. When you're doing the right things online, they're commenting, they're posting events, they have a directory listing, they're doing things to promote their business. And you as the owner of that site have visibility and access to this information, which is actionable. You literally can get businesses to come to you. If you're not seeing how this is working, how this can set up, we'll talk about it separately outside the scope of this call. Now, a little bit about content. So beyond the cutting room floor, what else can we do? I've got a small staff. I'm really busy. How do I make my web presence more vibrant with a few hours a week? First thing is local content ecosystem is not exclusively about articles. It's about business information. It's about events. It's about the inner connection of these. If you write an article about a business, you better well link to that business's listing in your directory. If there's an event, it better well link to the venue and vice versa. And if you're not using what we call a thoughtful application of user generated content, comments, event posting, etc., you are missing out. A clenched fist can't be filled up with cash. If you are clenching your web presence and you want to own and control everything, that's far, far worse for your business and your community than influencing those things. And don't mistake some user generated content with the inmates running the asylum. With that in mind, here are a few things. You've got events. You want to highlight events. You can highlight featured events, great local events and activities that are more prominent. This is fully monetizable. By the way, there's text here. If you want to read it, you can pause the video. I'm going to go quickly. Local guides. The thing about local is there's a lot of editorial to be had, but little provided. What I mean is it's easy to find business information. Do they exist? What are their hours? But it's hard to find more relevant context. In this case, where can I find a list of places that kids eat free? Now, you notice in this guide, it should link out to those listings in the directory and maybe to some articles about the businesses. Again, they can be sponsored. Do contests. All sorts of contests. Reader's Choice. Five-star customer reviews. That's one that we've got highlighted here. There's lots of ways to get the community involved and also to incentivize people and businesses to promote your website in the process. Again, when someone has liked to Facebook, not only do they reach their friends, but it helps improve your ranking in Google. Look at running things like Mother's Day contests, Father's Day contests, 4th of July. There's always an opportunity to engage your community and do it in a way that local businesses want to be involved. This isn't a banner ad, or at least not exclusively a banner ad. It's something special. And look at sponsored columnists. You know, lost dog articles go viral like clockwork because people want to help find the, the owner. Why not have an SPCA column sponsored by the pet store? All of a sudden you're getting content, you're driving revenue, it's working together, and it's not a lot of effort. Finally, this is something one of our publishers did in Ohio, got health inspection reports from restaurants, posted on a single article, by the way, publicly accessible, freely accessible, freely reusable reports, linked out to the article, linked out to the directory listing, published and shared. What you see here is 4,400 shares for a single article. We know from Google Analytics that it had well over 30,000 views. The community is under 50,000 people. There are really simple things you can do to have terrific engagement, to go viral, and to do it on a skeleton crew. So what does a successful cycle look like? Well, business basics and contextual calls to action are huge. If you just have your name in the masthead and your website on your the spine of your publication, that's just yet another website I'm not going to go to. But if you give me a reason within the context of the experience I'm enjoying, you better believe I'm going to check it out. When you use in this issue, you connect the dots and you can also connect listings to leads, which is great for driving your inbound leads. Of course, we want people to engage and share and then later you can actually share back to print. People comment, people engage, people talk. Why not highlight some things that people are saying in print that came from the web, even from Facebook? It's a great way to drive the connectedness. So parting thoughts, remember, it is all about the audience. Your readers and your advertisers are one and the same. And you can engage them across print and web and email and Facebook. And they don't undermine one another. They enhance one another when you do it the right way. And you can do this through a set of themes, which you likely already do, but you can extend it further and deliver packages that not only make you more money, but deliver more value to local businesses 
and allow you to differentiate a quick statistic. I just read 20 minutes before this particular recording that when Ford added a call to action to their video, uh, to their commercials on TV saying, text us for information on getting an auto loan, their conversion rate went up 15%. Think about that. You can help improve the profitability of your advertisers with just a few simple things and also drive traffic to your website. We hope that this has been uh, an insightful call. We hope that you learned something, that something sparked your interest, that you found something that you could apply. Locable is about creating Main Street for the 21st century, really modernizing, not revolutionizing, not changing, but modernizing ways communities connect and doing it with local publishers. If you run a local publication and, and you're looking for ways to build community and grow your business in the process, we'd love to hear from you.